Mr Speaker, to ask the Secretary of State for Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Affairs if she will make a statement on the killing of church worshippers in Ondo State, Nigeria yesterday and on wider issues of violence against religious groups in Nigeria. Minister. Mr Speaker, I am horrified by the attack that took place against a church in Ondo State, southwest Nigeria, yesterday. I have publicly expressed the UK Government's condemnation of this heinous act and stressed the importance of those responsible being brought to justice in accordance with the law. The High Commission in Nigeria has also expressed our condolences to the Governor of Ondo State and offered our support. I know that the House will join me in sending our condolences to the families and communities of those killed. Rising conflict and insecurity across Nigeria is having a devastating impact on affected communities. I have raised this issue with the Nigerian authorities on several occasions, including in conversations with Nigeria's Vice President and Foreign Minister during my visit in February. And during that visit, I also met religious governors, uh, sorry, regional governors, religious leaders, and non-governmental organisations to discuss intercommunal violence and freedom of religion or belief. It's clear that religious identity can be a factor in incidents of violence in Nigeria and that Christian communities have been victims. But the root causes are often complex and frequently also relate to competition over resources, historical grievances and criminality. So the UK Government is committed to working with Nigeria to respond to insecurity. At our Security and Defence Dialogue with Nigeria in February, we are committed to work together to respond to the conflict. We are supporting local and national peace building efforts in Nigeria, including through the Nigeria Governors Forum and National Peace Committee. We provide mentoring and capacity building to support Nigerian police force units to improve their anti kidnap capacity, and are supporting efforts to address the drivers and enablers of serious and organised crime in Nigeria. At our security and defence dialogue, we both reiterated our shared understanding and commitment to protecting human rights for all. We are committed to defending freedom of religion or belief for all and promoting respect between different religious and non-religious communities. I discussed forward with the Nigerian Foreign Minister just last month and we look forward to hosting an international conference on FORB in July. We will continue to encourage the Nigerian Government to take urgent action to implement long-term solutions that address the root causes of such violence. Thank you, Mr Speaker, for granting this question following the tragic news of the latest killings in Nigeria. A targeted attack, not on warring militia as part of armed conflict, nor even targeting farmers or villages over land. No, this was a brutal attack on a place of worship, Francis Xavier Catholic Church in Owo, and on worshippers gathering on Pentecost Sunday. A time of celebration turned into a time of carnage. And why? That is the really urgent question. The Governor of Ondo State, Governor Akaradolu, condemned the attack as vile and satanic. Reverend Auguste Ikwu, Secretary of the Catholic Church in Ondo, said, We turn to God to console the families of those whose lives were lost. And I'm sure the whole House will join in these words of condemnation and consolation for the victims and their families, and I do thank the Minister for her words in this connection. But as this urgent question implies, this latest atrocity is far from an isolated incident where religious minorities, particularly Christians, are being targeted. Bandits, predominantly militant Fulani herdsmen, have killed 3,000 people in 2022 alone. Most of these horrendous attacks have in recent times been in the Middle Belt region and have adversely affected the practice of Christianity in the region. My Honourable Friend for Stranford led an APP delegation to Nigeria last week alongside my Deputy Special Envoy David Burroughs. They heard evidence from Benu, Enunu, Plata, Southern Kaduna, Adamawa and Taraba states. People all saying the attackers of their communities are militant Fulani herdsmen whose targets, whose victims, are profiled based on their religious identity. I have a number of questions for the Minister. Whilst the causes of violence and conflict in Nigeria are complex, will she agree, following this latest attack, 
not in the Middle Belt nor in the North, but in the today relatively safe Southwest, that this is a FORB issue, as the attacks are mainly on largely Christian communities. Will the Minister agree to meet me and the APP delegation to hear how local faith actors and NGOs need more support to bring faith communities together? What can the government do to support the Nigerian constitution, constitutional guarantee of freedom of religion and from discrimination? How is the government's partnership with Nigerian security forces and legal services supporting the apprehension of perpetrators and preventing increasing acts of impunity across Nigeria? And finally, Mr Speaker, will the government support NGO calls for the establishment of special courts for speedy prosecution of perpetrators of violence in affected states to discourage impunity and will it support NGOs in providing better research and monitoring of such grievous religious and human rights violations? Order. Can, can I gently say, it's a very important issue, that's why I granted the UQ, but you can't double the amount of time that's available. We've got to stick to the rules of the House. Not my rules, but the MPs' rules. Minister? Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, can I first of all thank the Honourable Lady for asking this question and you, Mr Speaker, for granting it, and thank her also for all that she does uh, to speak for freedom of religion or belief across the world. Um, this was, as I've said, a heinous act. Uh, we have condemned it. It has been very widely condemned by both Christian leaders and also Muslim leaders, uh, leaders in Nigeria of different faiths have been very vocal, in, including the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs uh, under the leadership of uh, President General and Sultan of Sokoto. I mention that because I think it's important to note that um, all religion lead, religious leaders from all sides are coming together to condemn uh, this attack. Um, as I said in my opening statement, uh, it is clear that religious identity can be a factor in, 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 in some of these violence issues. Um, the sad fact is that uh, Nigeria is a country that is becoming increasingly violent. It is violent and, and there is rising conflict and insecurity. Um, that includes terrorism in the northeast and separately into communal conflicts and criminal banditry in the northwest, middle belt, violence in the southeast and southwest. But um, Ondo State, as she says, um, was an area that had not experienced tragedies such as this. So our High Commissioner has um, spoken, for example, to the parish priest of the church that was attacked to express our support and solidarity. We are encouraging religious leaders to peak act against this attack and continue to target, uh, and others that continue to target religious institutions. Uh, we're working really closely um, with religious leaders, but also liaising with the authorities in Ondo State um, to encourage a thorough investigation. So, her thoughts about investigation, we're di talking directly to the state about how best to help them and to support those. Um, coming together. So we are working with local faith actors and have done so since Sunday's um, attack. Um, the, the one thing that I, I would point out um, is that the, the really sad fact is that we're also seeing targeting actions against Muslim communities as well as Christian communities. So, for example, um, in April, in Tabara State, gunmen attacked a mosque. Um, so it is important to, to work with all sides um, when we are tackling this and that is why the UK will continue to also work with the government of Nigeria on uh, medium term and long term programmes to help address the causes of the instability um, as well as working with the police, for example, on improving uh, the work that they do. Thank you. Shadow Minister Bambos Cherilambos. Uh, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And I want to begin by thanking the Speaker for granting this urgent question. Uh, my honourable friend, the member for West Ham, who would have been taking this UQ, is unable to be with us today because she has COVID. We wish her a speedy recovery. Uh, the massacre in Owa yesterday was utterly horrific. 
To target a church where so many were gathered to peacefully pray and celebrate Pentecost is truly appalling. Reports suggest that at least 50 people have been killed, including children. The shock and sorrow, the anger and despair felt by the families and the communities broken by this atrocity will be shared on both sides of the house. And our solidarity extends further to the many across Nigeria in shared mourning for the lives lost. To millions of Catholics around the world and so many in British Nigerian communities who feel this is a personal blow. Sadly, this is not an isolated incident. Religious and ethnic bloodshed, kidnappings, and banditry, vigilantism and revenge attacks are all on the increase in Nigeria and each attack deepens the condition for further violence. Insecurity has been increasing rapidly across much of West Africa and we haven't seen an equally urgent response from the government. As the desert expands with climate heating, traditional livelihoods are destroyed, governments are weakened, mistrust grows along economic, ethnic and religious lines and criminals and terrorists fill the void. Surely we must recognise that insecurity even poses a threat to the stability of Nigeria as a democracy, and supporting such an important regional and global partner must be a top priority. So how will the government adapt and build upon the UK-Nigeria Security and Defence Partnership to focus on the drivers of insecurity on the ground across Nigeria? And what will the government do to stop Nigeria and the wider region from sliding further into instability with all the further atrocities that will result? Um, thank you, Mr. S um, so thank you uh, to the member for speaking. And can I just send my best wishes to the member for West Ham, our honourable member, and I hope that she feels better soon. Um, he asked a really important question about what are we doing to address the drivers of conflict. And there are different drivers in different parts of the country. Um, and I've had the huge privilege to be able to visit the country um, and, and talk to a lot of different groups and also uh, meet my counterparts a number of times. But so, for example, um, in some parts of the country you get conflicts between um, herders and ranchers. Um, so we have provided technical support to the Vice President's Office to develop Nigeria's National Livestock Transformation Plan, and this is to set out a long-term approach towards more sedentary forms of cattle rearing. Um, that explicitly is to address some of the drivers of intercommunal violence. That plan is now being um, implemented in eight different states of the Middle Belt region. It's a very specific targeted work that's now being implemented. Um, we also support efforts to respond to the conflict and, for example, um, work that we do on regional stabilisation efforts and the regionally led fight against arms groups, including demobilising, de-radicalisation and integration of um, former group members. We provide humanitarian aid to the crisis in northeast Nigeria where 8 million people need life-saving um, assistance. Um, one of the issues that we have helped with is um, improving uh, respect for humanitarian law within the defence services. So part of our defence training officer is improving understanding of international humanitarian law. When my visit to Nigeria, I was really pleased to hear that in the North East region, uh, the relationship between uh, security actors and local community uh, members seems to be improving and this was told to me by a local community le leader who directly related that improving uh, of relationships to the work that we have been doing to help improve understanding of hu humanitarian rights by the security services. So many, many different actions that we are taking in a very, very complex situation. And incidentally, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm going to have the huge honour of meeting uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury tomorrow, and I will certainly be discussing this with him. Dr Julian Lewis. Madam Deputy Speaker, will the Minister take a look at uh, early day motion number 95, uh, which has been tabled by the Honourable Gentleman for Strangford and others about the horrific stoning to death and then burning of the body and indeed uh, the buildings of the college of a young female Christian student who had the temerity to object to the way in which a WhatsApp group 
was being used for inappropriate, quote unquote, religious purposes. Does she accept that this problem goes wider than marauding groups? And will she make every effort to ensure that the Nigerian authorities bring the perpetrators of that barbaric crime, as well as this one, to justice? Madam Deputy Speaker, I, I believe the Honourable Member is talking about the awful murder of Deborah Samuel, um, which took place on the 13th of May. It was another barbaric and heinous act. I've expressed my public condemnation. We've urged the relevant authorities to ensure that perpetrators face justice in line with the law. I, I was also extremely sad and troubled to hear um, over the weekend uh, that there was a stoning and burning to death of what I believe was a member of a Muslim community in Abuja. Um, so again, it reflects the incredibly difficult situation that we have. And there is, of course, concern that as we move towards an election, violence may increase, which is why we are urging everybody to stay calm and uh, why it's so important that leaders come together to combat them this attack, but also urge for calm. SNP spokesperson Brendan O'Hara. Thank you. And may I begin by sending our deepest condolences to everyone affected by this appalling attack. This time last week, I was in Nigeria with the Honourable Member for Strangford, and while it's truly shocking, I fear that this latest atrocity will come as no surprise to the religious leaders the civic society activists and the victims that we met, all of whom told us how rampant corruption, a culture of impunity, the inability of the state to provide adequate security, escalating poverty are all driving this beautiful country to the edge of catastrophe. So could the Minister tell me what practical help has she offered? And in a country where we were told that everything is seen through the prism of religion, when did she last meet with a special envoy to specifically discuss the escalating religious-based violence in Nigeria? And rather than cutting aid by 50%, shouldn't the UK be investing to alleviate poverty and building those interfaith, intercommunity trust relationships to prevent such radicalisation in the future? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so his, the, the Honourable Gentleman is absolutely right to condemn this attack and can I thank him and indeed members of the APPG for the trip that they took to Nigeria last week. Um, I know that they worked with the High Commissioner to meet lots of different community leaders, faith leaders um, from many different parts of the country and that that visit was truly appreciated um, by the people who we met. Uh, there are a number of things I've already mentioned, some of the different pro programmes we do in Nigeria to tr try and improve um, stability and address some of the long-term concerns. We also do a lot of work in the region to try and prevent greater instability, so including across the Sahel and in Nigeria. That's, for example, why we've got peacekeeping troops in Mali with MONUSMA, why we support ECOWAS and their efforts, why we lead the international response on the Lake Chad Basin, and, I, and I've just, just mentioned um, that. Um, he asked me what meetings I've had recently. Um, I'm in a pretty regular contract with the, with the uh, foreign minister from Nigeria. In fact, I met, spoke to him when we were in Cote d'Ivoire, and I spoke to our High Commissioner uh, just, just last week. Sarah Owen. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Clergy have been kidnapped, women and girls raped, and ordinary worshippers murdered in their sanctuary. It's appalling that the regime of violence against Christians in Nigeria has been allowed to continue for so long. Open Doors report that even within government forces, Christians are vulnerable to persecution. Mm -hmm. And we've also seen that Muslims in Nigeria have been victims of targeted attacks. No one is spared. What reassurance can the Minister give those in the UK with loved ones in Nigeria that we will not just mourn this violence, but we will take proactive measures to protect the freedom and lives of religious minorities in Nigeria and worldwide. Um, as I've said, the UK is absolutely committed to not only working with the Nigerian government to try and improve stability and to tackle insecurity in what is a very challenging part of the world, but we also um, 
and leading some of the work internationally to promote the freedom of religious belief, uh, religion or belief. And this is why the work of the envoy, who actually I met in, in, in December formally, but I'm in pretty regular contact with, um, and indeed we exchanged messages as, as soon as we heard about this tragic incident, why her work is so important. But also so is the conference that we will be hosting, a global conference on this uh, in, in July. Uh, that will be at ministerial level. This is to absolutely drive forward international efforts on freedom of religion and belief. Um, and we continue to work with the UN, G7, other multinational fora. The really important issue here is that we stand together to condemn this, that we believe that uh, it is very important that not only we here in the UK, but across Nigeria, across communities, um, call for individuals to be held to account under, in, under the law under the law. They must be held to account under the law. Um, but also that call for calm is so crucial. John Cryer. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, what, what's happening in Nigeria has actually been going on for over a decade now and more or less meets the UN's um, definition of uh, genocide. Okay. Now, the Nigerian government may say they're taking action to prevent this and increasingly we're seeing attacks on Muslims for many years Christians have been predominantly the, uh, the, the, the targets they may say they're taking action there isn't much evidence to suggest that they're doing that with any great determination what have the government told the minister she says she has regular meetings uh, with them which I don't doubt but what has the, gov the Nigerian government said they are, what measures are they taking to address this and to stop it so the government, this is an extremely challenging issue, as he quite correctly says, that has been going on for many years. Um, terrorist attacks in northeast Nigeria, incidents of intercommunal violence in many states, they've had devastating impacts on both Christians and Muslim communities. Um, the government um, has worked with us, in the, the Nigerian government, in the... Um, security and defence dialogue that we launched earlier this year. Um, this was the first dialogue that we've had. Um, they asked us to, for example, improve mentoring and capacity building for police, um, to improve some of the work they do. Uh, we reiterated our shared understanding on commitment to protecting human rights for all. But there are so many different drivers for this. So this is, for example, why uh, the work that we've done with the Vice President's Office on other ways of, of uh, rearing cattle to try and reduce some of the conflicts between uh, the uh, different communities is re really important as well. And these are projects that we work on while we can with the government. But it is extremely important that we continue to urge all parties, including those who are hoping to stand in next year's election, to keep the calm and not incite violence. Leila Moran. Deputy Speaker, the shock of these unprovoked attacks is made all the more heartbreaking by the fact that it included children. So the Liberal Democrats add our voices of condemnation to that across this House. The Minister has very rightly identified that the causes of this are complex, but are to do with lack of resources and indeed insecurity. But I'm afraid, Madam Deputy Speaker, that the government's money is not where its mouth is. Not only has it cut the aid budget to Nigeria by half, but the forward projections are no good either. It went from 237 to 117, then it will go to 73 million, 55 million, then 40 million. How does that dwindling budget tally with what the Minister is saying about this country being serious about taking the root causes of this terrorism. Madam Deputy Speaker, I think it's really important to look at what we have done. Okay? I've mentioned a number of different projects and others are coming, but for example, our LINCS programme has facilitated investments worth over £14 million. Uh, that has created 20,000 full-time jobs. It's helping over 48,000 people increase their incomes since 2019. And as I said earlier, uh, when I uh, visited the region, I was very moved to hear how the relationships between um, the community members and members of the uh, forces had significantly improved in the Lake Chad Basin. It is a very difficult part of the world. It has got a 
very, very high levels of conflict, one of the highest countries in the world for conflict. But there were some uh, slithers of optimism uh, that I think we should continue to uh, try and develop. Uh, Mike Kane. Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. I, like million, hundreds of millions across the planet, had the pleasure of celebrating Pentecost um, yesterday. And with no disrespect for the Minister, I still don't think the FCDO uh, gets uh, this. Government has to recognise anti-Christian nature of the attack on the birthday of the church yesterday. Because there were attacks at the chapel of the Pentecost in Jerusalem as well yesterday. Does she agree that the religious dimension has to be addressed for progress to be made? Madam Deputy Speaker, as a Christian, I know how important Pentecost is. It is a really important service, and to attack Christians at prayer is a hideous crime. It is also a hideous crime to attack anyone from any religion who is trying to worship and pray for peace. And that has ripped away the peace of that community, of those who lost their lives and of their families. At this point, it is not clear who was behind the attack or motivated it specifically. Uh, There could be up to 50 uh, different victims. As I said in my opening remarks, it is clear that religious identity can be a factor of incidents of violence in Nigeria. We have seen attacks against churches. We have also seen attacks against mosques. And it's really important that we work with a country that is 50-50 in in Muslims and Christians, that we work uh, together across the face to call for peace, to call for calm, and to call out those who attack others, whether it's religious motivated or otherwise. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, The Minister highlighted the fact that we need to hold those to account in law. Um, Sunday is a religious day for many Nigerians, and to know that so many women and children died at St Francis' Church for just worshipping is very sad. And I will also send my condolences to those families. One of the key issues around this is the fact that um, support for regional, state and community policing in Nigeria, that instability is something that's been mentioned by many members across this house. Um, the minister may be aware that just a week ago the head of the Methodist church, Bishop Sam Kanu Uche, was kidnapped, ad- abducted in Ab- Abia State. Two weeks ago, um, two Catholic priests were also kidnapped. Again, people merely wanting to worship and express their religion are being attacked What more is the Minister going to do in addressing this to help provide basic security for communities, including communities my constituency, Vauxhall, who are worried about their family back at home in Nigeria? Um, There's a number of different questions there, and I understand how concerned some of her constituents may be about their family back in direct Nigeria. Um, Firstly, when we met with the Nigerian government in the dialogue on security and defence in February, uh, we agreed to cooperate to support Nigeria's security challenges and to promote human rights, and that's a really important part of the, the, the policing here. Uh, we have um, offered to support Ondo State, uh, liaising already with the governor there um, to encourage a th- thorough investigation. I, I know that my High Commissioner is also encouraging religious leaders to speak out against this attack, but to, to, to encourage them to come together in condemnation, but also to continue to call for calm, uh, to give support to the victims and to ensure that those who face justice, uh, uh, the justice is in line with the law. And those are key uh, commitments that we are working to try and support from all community leaders. And on top of that, of course, the APP Chief of Freedom of Religion Belief visited the country just last week. Shannon. Speaker, can I thank the Honourable Lady for Congleton for bringing it forward and to the Minister for her responses. Um, I, I wish to also uh, associate myself and, spread and convey my deepest sympathies to the, those who grieved today and, and will continue to pray for, their, for all of those families. 
As the Minister knows, uh, I travelled to, to Nigeria last, last week with members of this house in Naylor Place. Yeah. There we met with many Christians who had been targeted in the very same way as those celebrating Pentecost at St Francis Church were targeted. Just last year, Minister, 4,650 Christians were killed for their faith in Nigeria, 13 per day. In our discussions with the Nigerian government and the state uh, uh, governors and the British High Commissioner, it is clear that the duty of any government is to protect its people first and foremost, to keep them safe from murder and to ensure that their right to, to worship their God in the way that they wish to do. So, can I ask the Minister, what help can the UK government give to the Nigerian government and to the military to combat the terrorism in general, ever mindful that the military were involved in 30 uh, operations out of the 36 states in Nigeria? It's a big job. We need to help them. Well, first of all, can I thank the Honourable Member for Strangford for leading the delegation last week. Um, it was an invaluable opportunity to meet with religious and political leaders and discuss freedom of religion or belief in Nigeria. I also believe that you raised the impact of conflict and insecurity on FORB, um, and this is an issue which Sunday's attack just so dreadfully highlighted. Um, but thank you for continuing to fly that flag. In terms of um, support, we have a number of programmes running in the country. We're working with the um, military on training, for example, on human rights. It, I have heard that that has been making a difference. It is a very, very complica complex situation, but we do stand ready to support where we can. Hello, Hayes. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, my thoughts are today with the families and friends of the worshippers brutally killed in St Francis Church in Owu yesterday on a sacred day for Christians around the world. Members of my constituency, who, 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 my constituency or members of the Nigerian diaspora have been raising their grave concerns around escalating religious-based violence in Nigeria for a long time now. And I tabled a, question, a written question a year ago on this topic and I looked at the answer today. The response then was the same as the response we've had from the Minister today, which is that the government is encouraging the Nigerian government to take urgent action. While we've had warm words from the Minister today, um, I'm afraid the response doesn't meet the scale of the urgency of this horrific loss of life and escalating violence that we are seeing in Nigeria. So I asked the Minister what is her own measure of the success of the programmes that she's talked about today? How will she know what is the impact that she is looking at, at for those interventions? And what engagement is she having with members of the Nigerian diaspora here in the UK to help inform the government's approach and make sure that it really is having an impact to stop this terrible violence? I'd like to thank the Honourable Lady because she is actually asking really important questions. This is, is a really, um, it's a really tragic situation. It is one of the most violent countries in the world, and the violence is uh, coming for many, many, many different reasons and different reasons in different parts of the country. Uh, this is what I've heard when I visited myself. Um, but also when I've spoken to different leaders on the ground, different community groups, different stakeholders, uh, that, that one of the huge tragedies about Sunday's awful attack is that it was in a part of the country which historically has been and has not seen this type of attack. So it, it's even, in a way, even, even more shocking um, and more concerning that it's, it's, it's therefore potentially widening. Uh, we are concerned and we continue to be concerned about the increase in this violence, especially in a country which is so significant and has got so many brilliant things happening in it. Um, but that is why we've worked with the government uh, to see where we can support what they needs to be done. We work with community leaders. We take different actions in different parts of the country as well. We often work with different um, state governors on different projects to try and increase stability and increase prosperity. Uh, for example, uh, investing in, in education, investing in entrepreneurship programmes, etc. are all part of creating stability as well. On the issue of, of uh, attacks against different religious groups, sometimes Sometimes these attacks are religious, can, can have a religious link, other times they don't. But that's why we work uh, not only to uh, support uh, joint voices coming together um, from different com religious communities, but also to tackle the causes of instability. 
Can I just sing, Jesse? Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. The massacre of at least 50 Christian church worshippers in Ondo State, Nigeria, and other recent violence against faith groups is utterly reprehensible, and my heartfelt condolences to the uh, loved ones of victims. So what steps is the government taking to advise and support the capacity of regional state and community policing across Nigeria, our close ally, to provide basic security for communities and to stop the rise in banditry, uh, vigilantism and further religious extreme violence. Mr Speaker, the member is absolutely right about the concerns of rising violence and it's precisely because we recognise the impact of rising insecurity in Nigeria that we hosted our first ever security and defence dialogue in February. It took place over a number of days and in great detail. We um, came out of that committing to work together to do more to respond to the security challenges and, and, and indeed to the rising insecurity. Uh, so, for example, uh, one of the things that we have committed to support is the delivery of effective, accountable and responsive civilian policing. This was a request from the Nigerians. Could we do more there? And that is what we will be doing. One of the many actions that we will be doing to Mari Rimmer. And I pray homage to the rank mem the Honourable Member from Congleton. My thoughts and prayers are with the souls departed, and I hope the families that they leave behind can get some comfort from their own faith. Nigeria is one of the top five receivers of British aid, receiving around £250 million a year. Yet the Nigerian government are consistently failing to protect the freedoms and rights of minorities. The situation is worsening. It is not improving. The British taxpayer wants their aid support to go to the countries that are protecting the rights of women, religious minorities and other groups. So what is the Minister doing to pressure the Nigerian government to doing all they can to protect Christians and other minorities? Um, Madam Deputy Speaker, it is absolutely right that we work with not that Nigeria. Nigeria is a country which we have very long and historic and deep ties with and very close links and very close diaspora links, as many of the members have also said. And that is why it is a very significant recipient of UK aid. That's also why we work on so many different projects in different parts of the country to try and tackle the different issues that are um, being impacted here. I think we shouldn't underestimate, for example, the impact climate change is having on the country, which is another driver of the instability. And that is why, in our international development strategy, we are not only you know, continuing to, to fund work that we do on supporting women and girls, who are also the targets, but also focusing on work to help to adapt and mitigate climate change. And that's, again, some of the work that we will be doing in Nigeria. Christine Matheson. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I've also spoken to Nigerians in my constituency, and the message from them is a familiar one. Like the Honourable Lady from Congleton said, they are concerned that this is not the first time. But they are also concerned, as Honourable Friends from uh, uh, Dulwich and West Norwood, uh, Leighton and Wanstead and others, uh, Vauxhall have said, that there does not seem to be a sense of urgency from the Nigerian government. It's not necessarily that they are um, condoning these attacks, but their foot is not on, uh, hard on the, on, on the uh, accelerator pedal. Does the Minister uh, have full confidence at the moment that the Nigerian Presidency has an understanding of just how serious these attacks are viewed uh, and is really ready to take firm action to prevent further repeats? It is, uh Madam Speaker, as I said, I, I discussed the situation of insecurity and rising insecurity with both the Vice President and the Foreign Minister when I was in the country in February. Uh, we have then have had this extensive dialogue uh, between our two countries to look at how we can help. I, I know they are deeply concerned about the rising insecurity. They are deeply concerned, actually, about the rising security across the Sahel and how that could impact on, on Nigeria. Um, they are in the beginning of a process of a presidential election. Uh, one of the main parties has now chosen its leading candidate. The other has yet to do so. Uh, there is a concern that uh, as we go through an election period, sometimes you see increased instability, increased violence. And that is why, again, I say it is so important that we all 
call for calm. We urge our constituents, if they're from the diaspora, to call for calm, to call across across the different religious divides, as I witnessed in my childhood in Northern Ireland, how important it is to work across the religious divides and call for calm, and call for those who uh, did this heinous crime to be held to account, but held to account in accordance with the law. Kim Johnson. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and I'd like to send my condolences to the family and the loved ones of those murdered at St Francis' Church, Catholic Church in Awu, and to the long-established Nigerian community who worship at St Clair's Catholic Church in my Liverpool Riverside constituency. So can the Minister explain what steps are being taken to ensure that increased poverty and food insecurity doesn't become a driver for further violence and instability in Nigeria and the wider region. Yeah. The, the, the Honourable Member makes a really important point about the impact of uh, rising cost of living on not only Nigeria but across, in not on the region, but actually across the continent of Africa. And Putin's horrific um, and illegal war in Ukraine has pushed up world food prices and that is having a real impact on the world's poorest, including many in Africa. The main thing that the UK has done is worked as one of our positions as a lead shareholder in the World Bank to unlock $170 billion of funding, an unprecedented package of support to go to the poorest countries in the world to help them to cope with the rising cost of food and fuel prices. Uh, that funding, and a lot of that funding, is going out quite rapidly, and we are encouraging it to go to the poorest countries first. But this, by Putin, is impacting on the world's poorest, including in Nigeria and across the continent of Africa. Thank you. I thank the uh, Minister for answering the urgent question. And the clerk will now proceed to read the orders of the day.